at like two o'clock in the morning and it's ding 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 If they badmouth you, if they badmouth you, I am here. I'm coming here to be petty and I'm going to show the world the type of person that you are. I think only the whole entire world knows who Tabo Pesta is, but Tabo Pesta doesn't know who Tabo Pesta is. A laptop, however, not is it. Not is it. What? P. Diddy O. P. Dot P. Love P. Booger Sugar. <laughs> and still the judge said, nothing. He is gonna sing like a canary. He baited those guys. He baited them. All of a sudden, she's an Af uppity African. If she loses that part of her that is colored, that is South African, that we have gone to town fiercely defending. <laughs> Everybody. Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to another video. As always, thank you so much for choosing me over and over and over again. If you would like to become a member of this channel, you definitely can. You're more than welcome. There is a join button somewhere below here. I think it's on the right hand side. I don't quite remember, but it's there. It's somewhere there. So excited about today's video. Welcome everybody. Thank you for choosing me over and over again. Let us get into my take controversial trending topics there's been a lot that has been going on and i i just knew it i just knew that there would be a number of things that you guys would like me to speak on people acting crazy you know baby oils my bye <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so let's get into it. We're going to start with the first controversial trending topic that you wanted my take on and let's get into it. I'm a little bit late with this. I'm a few weeks late, but I don't record these videos every week. So that's how it happens. Latoya and Lebo. Latoya, stop. Latoya is, up. Latoya is a, uh, uh. okay. <laughs> okay. All right. Look, when I, I typically, so we saw this interview that, um, Lungelo gave on his channel. He is one of our colleagues here on YouTube. He has got a channel called engineer your life and it's great. It's a great channel. I've watched quite a number of videos from that channel and this time around was Latoya and Lebu. Now, if you do not know who Latoya and Lebu are, Latoya is a South African actress who has been on a number of South African uh, shows, telenovelas. I'm telling you, this story with Latoya and Lebu is literally a telenovela walking. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yes. Anyway, so we're not really sure about what Lebu does. I don't know what Lebu does, but I do know that she was married to Latoya. And so she did this interview with Lungelo, which I will add in here so you can see a little bit in terms of um, what was discussed in the interview. Yeah, let me, let me add it in here. This one must go on. Yeah. The trips I was going to. Kiri trip za hata bungo mabach. Neki zama miketi. Neki shaba di budi. Kiri shaba di nguki. Kiri shaba di koko. I centered my life around her. So when this person boldly sits on national TV, on a national podcast, and says she was so narcissistic, she distanced me from people. Exactly what the hell does she mean? What does she mean? What does she mean? I'd love for her to go to any podcast and say, I gave up my life to go to this so-and-so friend of hers, this so-and-so friend of hers. We used to do this with I get, I, I, I can't tell you anything that I did with my life for the past four years. Naki Dula Monku. Actually, if I've never believed in witchcraft, this is the one time I believe in witchcraft. Because when I look at my life for the past four years, I was a bloody zombie. Hmm. I, was a, I was a bloody zombie. Hmm. I was a bloody zombie. 
So she was essentially talking. She went on to the program to talk about her marriage to Latoya. But what happened is she used that opportunity to go off. She was absolutely ranting and losing her marbles when it came to what was going on with in her marriage to Latoya. I have some thoughts. I always have some thoughts. Um, first things first is... I genuinely think that Lebu shouldn't have gone that far, but I'll start here. When I watched this interview all those weeks ago, the first most immediate thing that came into my mind is, I believe her. I believe her. There is certain things that you're not going to lie about. There's certain things that you just aren't going to use someone else's name and lie on their name about, especially knowing that they didn't happen. Does she embellish? I think so. <laughs> I think that she completely embellishes a lot of things and goes extra and exaggerates, uh, goes above and beyond with certain things. However, there's many things that she mentioned in that interview about how she, the drug situation and how she found Latoya in the bathroom with a man for drugs and doing things for drugs and all of this, that and the other. Why would she lie about things like that? Why would she lie about things like that? Um, the Gobella situation and how much she was charging people and how she wouldn't wake up in the morning and she, Lebu would have to be the one to wake up and do the drums if you know, you know, if you know, you know. Exenigavu at like two o'clock in the morning and it's ding, 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 you're banging on drums, okay? It's, it's for the trainees. It's for the twassers, okay? So apparently this is something that Latoya was supposed to do because she's the Kobela. She's just the wife of the Kobela. And then she goes on to level out and say that she isn't even actually a Kobela. <laughs> like at this point, Begunini man. There was a lot going on in that interview. There was just so much going on in that conversation that all Lungelo could do was just, oh, mm, mm, oh, because I think Lebu used that opportunity to vent out her frustrations towards her ex-wife, um, to talk about certain things. But I did think that what she did was, yeah, it was reputational damage. For Latoya, I think it was a lot, a lot, a lot. What someone chooses to do in their personal and intimate space, whether they want to smoke the drugs, whether they want to smoke the weed, whether they want to what, what, I don't think is the place of anyone else to out that information about them. Ah, uh, what a far, no man. Ah, uh, eh. Uh, oh, what? Especially given that I tried to look for previous interviews where Latoya was talking about Lebo, and I didn't see that many. I think one of the papers did an interview with her, but what Latoya said about Lebo was nothing on what Lebo said. Lebo was like, I am here, I'm coming here to be petty, and I'm going to show the world the type of person that you are, and to do that, um over someone that you love and to put someone that you love, because I do still believe that she loves her. She's just very, very angry right now. She's very upset. I don't think that they should be together. I do genuinely think that they are toxic AF to each other, towards each other. But what I don't like is the fact that Lebu used this platform to literally badmouth her ex-wife. This is someone that you love, loved, whatever it may be. There's just certain things that are just kept away from the limelight. I do understand the fact that she's angry, but you know, mentioning the thing about the underwear, come on, man. Come on, man. I just thought that it wasn't in great taste. But also I understand that when people are mad, they will just go off, okay? They will enter into Perryville and they will absolutely go off. But I just 
am not of the the party and the school of thought where you should be bad mouthing somebody that you once loved and what what if they bad mouth you if they bad mouth you if they bad mouth you then all bets are off all bets are off my babe if they bad mouth you then all bets are off i don't care i don't care you decided to go to the media and do this then all bets are off or should i find out from other people that you've been going around bad mouthing me all bets are off i get that she had an intention she did that the other thing that i'm going to say is that people don't make mistakes people don't make mistakes people know exactly what it is that they're doing and labeling you exactly what it is that she was doing when she went on to engineer your life to speak about latoya in the manner that she spoke about latoya mm. it is what it is but i really wish them uh both peace of mind and healing and growth um they clearly have a lot that they need to work on um separately separately and maybe if one day together and the thing is we can sit here and laugh about their relationship or or like eat popcorn and listen to all of this and blah 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 we can sit here and do all of that but the reality is if these people go back together and they get back together who's the one who ends up having egg on their faces So at the end of the day you can say whatever you want about people's relationships or whatever if people decide to get back together all the judgments all the things that you said be very careful about the things that you say because all the things that you said all those judgments they're sitting on you right now babe because those people are sitting there and they are laughing from here to Timbuktu like oh my god i'm so sorry i embarrassed you like that but i love you you know i love you um, the so next one is tabo besta uh, who in the world your honor i require access to a, to a laptop to type But your honor, your honor, you haven't even heard my application. We are making a decision up front. For what reason, in which constitutional reason do you give to deny me access without hearing my application, your honor? That okay, who in the world does Tabo Besta think he is? Hmm. I think only the whole entire world knows who Tabo Besta is, but Tabo Besta doesn't know who Tabo Besta is. <laughs> the murderer that he is the r worder that he is i mean come on bro look one thing i will say is that he decided he's representing himself that's fine so because he's representing himself he's exercising his right to request um to have documentation to request to have books to request to have like legal books law books things like that because he is representing himself he is exercising his right and i think in this regard when it comes to the books to the to the to the documentation regarding this whole entire case he's got every right to have access to those things i draw the line at tabo besta getting a laptop he's mad <laughs> It's because he had access to a laptop and the internet that Tabo Besta did what he did. So I love the fact that the judge came back and said, "Where in the constitution does it say that you have a constitutional right to have access to a laptop?" She didn't deny him the books. She didn't deny him the documentation. She didn't deny him all those things that everybody who's representing themselves would need to have access to to work through for the in time for their next court appearance. She didn't deny him that. She actually said, "Yes, I will make sure that you have all of this that and the other." A laptop, however, not is it? Not is it? What? That shit is crazy. I I don't... I I really don't like that guy. Who does he think he is though? Tabo Besta to be party. I think Tabo Besta has forgotten. Tabo Besta is smart. I think it doesn't 
it's not lost on any of us that Tabo Pesta is smart. That is why he's been able to evade the law as long as he has. That is why he was able to stage a whole entire prison, prison break, my babe, with the good help of the good doctor, the good doctor, right? And all of this, it doesn't take away, it's not lost on us that Tabo Pesta is extremely smart. And it's because he's extremely smart which makes it even more dangerous to give him a laptop. Absolutely not. But to give him the access to anything digital would be a gross mistake on behalf of the South African legal system. It would be a gross, gross, gross mistake because we have learned and seen what Tabo Besta has done over the years. Right? The videos that he would be recording from prison just... Or when they were singing happy birthday to him, thinking that he's in some other part of the world celebrating his birthday. He was in prison. That was internet. That was phone. That was this, this, this. It is dangerous to have someone like Tabo Besta, especially someone who particularly looks like he might have access to very highly influential people. It is dangerous for him to have access to things that are digital, anything digital. Phone, laptop, whatever, dangerous. Gross, gross mistake should the law ever allow or the courts ever allow him to get a laptop. I would be very surprised. So that rant that he had, go off. In terms of the things that you need, the books, the documentation, go off. It's your constitutional right, especially if you are defending yourself. You need access to that paperwork. But digital... Get out of here. I think Tabo Pesta has completely forgotten who he is and why he is where he's at. Tabo Pesta thinks we are just literally talking about a small summons here that we just need to get. Hey, umulai, ubulai lebatu, umshugumezeli, ushugumeza, washugumeza, when ushugumeza basadi. And now you want to have a, a special treatment by getting a laptop, please, man. Diddy! Love. P. Did. P. Dot. Eh? Uh, what's the other one? Puffy. <laughs> what's about time? Look. I think it, it was bound to happen. We all knew that P. Diddy was going to be arrested. Okay. How the feds decided to do it was fantastic because he was supposed to check himself into check himself. He was supposed to appear at the jailhouse. Okay. He was supposed to appear at the jailhouse the following day. They picked him up the day before they made sure that they pick him up the day before. Even if his lawyers and everybody was like, it's okay, judge, we're going to bring him in. The feds were like, no, we need him the day before. We can't risk with this one. We can't risk, you know, we can't risk. And I loved the fact that they did that because you can say whatever. P. Diddy is going to, he is a flight risk. He is a flight risk. And given the fact that they denied him the bail, I wasn't surprised that they denied him that because he's a the man has his own jet. The man is a cabillionaire, okay? He's got his own jet. There is no way he could make it happen. And not only that, he's a flight risk. He's got a lot of influential people in his pocket that could make it happen for him to get him to leave the country and be in a country where there's no extradition laws to the U.S. So it's good that they made sure that they take him. They had to take him, dog. They had to take him. The fact that P. Did, P. Dot, Love, Didio, the fact that Mr. Didio so <clears throat> paid off his house, his bail fee was 50 million dollars do you know that many of us are never even going to be able to comprehend what kind of figure that is in our lifetime 50 million dollars what did he do he paid off his house and he put down his house 
as collateral, his house, his mama house. Aye, 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 aye. He gave the courts the passports of not only himself, but his family members, his mom's house, his children, his mother's passport. And still the judge said, nothing. <laughs> the judge was like, you're not going anywhere. Get comfortable, babes. You're not going anywhere. And then the stories came out and we saw the baby oil. Wow. Wow. Listen here. 1,000 bottles of baby oil. 400 or 700 odd and something dildos. It doesn't take a rocket scientist to know that Diddy was up to some messed up stuff. And how is it? We'll come back to the baby oil because what are you talking about? What are you, what are you talking about? What are you talking about? We'll come back to that one. But let's talk about how many CEOs stepped down. This is something that I find very fishy. How many CEOs stepped down two days after Diddy was arrested? Two days. Some said they're tired. They're retiring. Some said, let other people come in. I'm tired of sitting in the position of CEO. Some people said whatever. It shows you how much of influence that P. Diddy O, P. Dad, P. Love, P. Booger Sugar. <laughs> P. Booger Sugar has on people. And now the thing is, he goes into the prison, into the jail, right? They got him in the jail. He goes into the jail and he's immediately placed on suicide watch. Immediately. You know why he's placed on suicide watch? Not necessarily because he might off himself, but because P. Diddy has a lot of heat and a lot of dirt on many people, many very influential people that can arrange a hit on P. Diddy. That is why. That is why he is poured in a certain part of the prison where he is watched at all times, where nobody can get easy access to him and all of this. That is why he is put there. Not necessarily because he's going to off himself, no. And I think the people that are highly implicated implicated in these freak off tapes in these business dealings in these this that and the other are very influential people and those people that are highly influ influential those people that are highly influential do not want anything of the sort coming out anything of the sort they don't want anything of the sort coming out my vibe because it could ruin them yes hmm hmm it could ruin them. P. Diddy knows he's going to go down. It's not even everybody knows he's going to go down. P. Diddy is done. He's done. He's done. However, what I think a lot of people are fearful of the most is the fact that he is going to sing like a canary. Then you can... It makes sense! Then... P. Diddy is not the type. P. Booger Sugar, P. Love is not the type who's going to go alone, go down alone, never. The reality is we're going to wait a long time. This trial is probably going to happen sometime next year, given everything that has come out, all of these freak-off parties, all of the names that are supposedly mentioned, all of the things, the security guards and, and all of that who spoke about having seen these things, your Meek Mills, your Will Smithers that have been mentioned, your all of this, all of these people allegedly that have something to do with P. Diddy and this sordid, he's a monster. P. Diddy Uditsila. P. Diddy is in and under the jail, in and under the jail for racketeering, for so many things, for rape, for sexual abuse, hey, sexual harassment, racketeering, drugs, baby oil.
<laughs> the Babel Restaurant Centurion. Mishali did the Lord's work. That girl absolutely did the Lord's work. Mishali made sure that I'm going to talk about this. It doesn't matter what happens to me, whatever. It, it exposed the lack of law-abidingness and the lack of following rules and protocols when it comes to labor and employees and all of this in South African restaurants. This is not the first time this has happened. The only difference now is that Michali literally sat and did that TikTok, which I will put in here to those who haven't seen it, she said she did that TikTok and she was like, I'm outing everything. Papers, employees, labor relations, all of this kind of thing. It's showing you that there is just so much corruption. We're sitting here thinking that, that the corruption is only at government level. Corruption even in private businesses exists where people who do not have the right papers and documentation are working in certain places and establishments. Not only that, they are being paid little to nothing. Now, in Michali's case, it's even worse because they were expecting their own employees to buy their own things that they would need for their job, like the, the can openers and the, not can openers, the bottle openers and scissors and their own uniform and this and that and the other. That's ridiculous. At which point, wait, how? 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 Because the uniform is the responsibility of the establishment that you work at irrespective of whether it's a restaurant or a security company or whatever, it's the responsibility of that establishment. She has blown the lid absolutely open to showing the discrepancies, the corruption, the bad practice of these establishments. And not only was it Babel or Babel, Right? Not only was it Babel, but also Ocean Basket was hit on the same day. There's many other restaurants. If this thing should have done one thing, it's to make restaurant owners terrified. I feel like these inspections or surprise inspections should happen more often than not. It's exposing so many things. You know, Cat Williams said in 2024, many things are going to come out. And I don't even think that he was probably saying it in the American space, but I feel like 2024 has shown us flames. Let's end it off with shits and gigs. <sighs> Let me tell you one thing. I'm a big fan. I was. <laughs> I was a big fan of shits and gigs. Big fan. Big fan. I wasn't following them religiously, but I enjoyed seeing the little clips and snippets and all of that. Even though I may have seen a couple that were quite problematic, no, they leveled me out. Unfortunately, I cannot follow James and Fuhard anymore because as a black woman, <clears throat> am I surprised? No. Let me explain. I'll put in the TikToks here and whatever so you can see them, okay? They go on to... Andrew Schultz's podcast called Fla Flagrant and Andrew Schultz if you don't know him he's a comedian but he's a very problematic comedian who has been known to be very racist and very this and bigotry and saying all sorts of things that are just terrible okay terrible a white man, okay? So, James and Fuhard go onto the flagrant, I can never say that word, the flagrant podcast, and this is what they do. What is the black girlfriend effect? This is oh, the you know, you know just about blow up the other culture. Yeah, so you'll see a, a, a guy who's had a black girlfriend, all of a sudden he's got buzz cut, like, yeah. clean shape up. Nah, he's too nah, tall. Yeah, yeah. 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 Exactly. Up, yeah I like that. that. I like that. that. They yeah. shave their hair because they start losing it. Because it's so stressed <laughs> around this black girl complaining about shit all the fucking time. That's why they got to shave their nah, hair. Nah, bro. White guys with black girlfriends, they, they, they grow a beard because there's up. more cushion when they get slapped the fuck out of it. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> That's hilarious. I think I think the black girlfriend effect. Hmm. It might be a protective instinct, bro. You think? Protective. Yeah. Do you guys? Do you guys? Have you ever had black girlfriends? Yeah. 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 Do you, have you ever had white girls? Yeah. Yeah. Oh wow. Okay. What's your favorite? <laughs> <laughs> We love them all. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh, really? Just, we love them all. Yeah, that means white. Who gets nah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. <laughs> I hopefully I've put that one up. But to wrap it up, these are my thoughts. First and foremost, I don't think it was the smartest idea for the boys, uh, James and Fuhard, to go on to the flagrant podcast. I think they should have done a little bit more digging and research about Andrew Schultz, who he is and what he does. Number one, I'm not going to fault Andrew Schultz for being abrasive and all of that. He is just, he's a comedian. Comedians tend to be abrasive, tend to talk about things, tend to say things that we could never say. I will, however, fault him on what he said. So as you can see, as you've probably seen, they made a comment about the black wife effect and the boys started the shits and gigs crew started explaining that to Andrew Schultz who he didn't know what it was about and then he retorts Schultz retorts and says that oh no but yeah obviously they they're going to change their look and whatever whatever because they don't want to be beaten up by their black wives and they don't want to bleed whatever basically degrading and dehumanizing and literally just being insulting towards black women. Why I think, even though he's a comedian, that this is unacceptable is because of his race. I don't think Andrew Schultz should have spoken on a race that is not his own and on females when he is a male. Do you understand? So for him to have done that is very racist. I don't care who says what. It's racist and he baited those guys. He baited them. That's an absolute bait. How they responded by laughing is very disappointing. And I am not surprised. One, Shits and Gigs is not the kind of podcast that is thought-provoking. They're not, they're not thought leaders, bro. Shits and Gigs are sitting there and they're laughing and they're reading out tweets and they're making jokes and they da 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 And it's not the first time that James and Fuhard have mentioned comments in relation to black women that are so demeaning and insulting, right? It's not the first time this has happened because now people have pulled out previous podcast episodes where James and Fuhard have done what they did, right? So Schultz baited them. They took the bait and they laughed and they laughed. And I'm not surprised that they did because they just don't give off that energy to me of men who are going to say, Hey man, uh, -uh, uh, -uh. <laughs> no, 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 let's not do that. Let's not do that. That's not cool. Whatever. They don't give me that energy. They just genuinely don't give me that energy. Are we disappointed? Yes. But do we also understand that we live in a society where black women seem to be the bud of jokes by many other cultures and races, white people, bud of jokes, bud of insults. The white people will make black women the butt of their jokes, the butt of their insults. Women, not only black people, I'm drawing it down and narrowing it down to black women. White women will come for black women. White men will come for black women, uh, like Andrew Schultz did. Uh, um, black men will come for black women. Black men, some, and please take this into consideration, a lot of. Not all of them, but a lot of them, black men just don't like black women. They don't treat them in the way in which you see black men who date white women treat them. Very true. I don't care who says what. You can be mad about what I'm saying, but you know it's facts. So to watch two black men laugh at a white man making a black woman, making black women the butt of his joke... is not surprising to me. I can't say I expected better from James and Fuhard. And for me, that is my fault because, wow, I, am I surprised? I'm not. I'm not surprised.
So for me, it was just like, damn. Okay. Then they came back with what they think is an apology. It's a sorry excuse for an apology. It isn't one. Then they came back with that. And I was like, they only did this because they want to save themselves. They want to save their business, their podcast, their whatever. So they only acted because they knew. They know that the demographic of the people who watch them, the larger demographic of the people who watch them are black women. So they felt the need to stand up and say something. But not only whether it wasn't an apology to black women, because that's not what it felt like to me when I was watching that. But it was to save their own asses, basically. Basically, that's what they were doing. They Andrew then came back up after they did their apology to their people. And Andrew came back and said, and mentioned something that was very poignant that actually got me shaking, being so mad, even more mad at James and Fuhad. Andrew said that they could have taken that part out that there were other parts of the podcast that they asked not to be put in the podcast that were taken out, but they kept that particular part in. That says a lot about James and Fuhard and their production team and their people. That says a lot because at podcasts that are at that level, that are making that kind of money, that have different people, that have interests of their own to, to uphold and all of that, in the editing process, you are definitely going to scrutinize everything piece by piece to make sure that your image as an entrepreneur or as a podcast person or as a celebrity, whatever, that your image isn't tarnished. For the mere fact that those men didn't see that, they did not see that, is wild to me. Let's see. Tyler on the uppity African chat. Leave Tyler alone. Like, honestly, I genuinely feel like the Americans are mad at Tyler. And for what, I don't quite understand. Ah, uh, Eman. Ah, uh, Eman. Ah, uh, Eman. Ah, uh, I, 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 I. Because Tyler asked at the VMAs to have, was it Lil Nas or something, hold her award for her while she gives her acceptance speech and her thank you speech. So she asked him to hold it for her. And she said, it's heavy. It's not the first award that she said is heavy. Can somebody please hold this for me? She's a tiny girl, bro. Come on. Now, all of a sudden, because Tyler did just that one thing, Many Americans were upset at the fact that it seems like she's so unappreciative. Like, who does she think she is? Asking Lil Nas to hold the award for. Are you are you mad? Ah, what a far no man. Ah, eh. Oh, what? How many other videos then came out of? Cardi B asking someone to hold the award. So-and-so asking somebody to hold the award. Olivia Rodriguez asking somebody to hold the award. Now, because Tyler does it, and Tyler is an African who many Americans seem to think she should be grateful that she is so well-loved and that she's got an award. That Here's the thing. Tyler understands that she's got a huge following all over the world but tyler also understands that she's south african and tyler also understands that she's colored that's why she doubled down on the colored one and she was like i'm colored that's how i'm referred to in my country and from my people and this and this in our racial spectrum at home this is how i'm referred as colored the americans got mad at that why how are you going to make someone feel bad about clearly a concept of a racial demographic of people from another country that you do not understand, but because she refers to herself as colored and it's associated with certain uh, uh, things in your country, Taylor sh Tyler should not refer to her as herself as colored? What? Then now you've got an issue with the fact that Tyler presents as this confident young woman, great body, 
great talent South African and all because she asked nicely even, can you please hold this award for me so I can speak and say thank you to my people and my team and the fans and all of that. All of a sudden she's an up uppity African and then Taylor leveled and she does, she did what coloreds and South Africans would do. And she put uppity African in her and she was pretty, pretty. And I love it for her. I love it for her. I think Tyler also understands at her core that her big, she would be doing a disservice to her South African fan base. If she loses that part of her that is colored, that is South African, that we have gone to town fiercely defending when the Americans try to come for her. So if she loses that and she changes to fit the American demographic, what does that say for us? The people who are all over the other parts of the world, but more specifically South Africa, who have gone to war for her. Because we want to, we love it. We're going to do it every day. South Africans will go to war. On TikTok, South Africans, uh, shits and gigs the first time they apologized on their platform was to South Africans. Remember the whole gibberish incident? So something rubs them up the wrong way that Tyler is confident and she owns her stuff and she's not going to be like, oh, I'm so grateful for this opportunity. Thank you, America and Americans. She's there by right. She's talented. She's good at what she does. Maya, come on, please, man. That then means that all of us are uppity Africans. <laughs> That's what it means. Okay, I'm going to wrap this up here. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And if you did, thank you. Give it a like, subscribe, watch all the ads. As always, thank you so much for choosing me over and over again. I appreciate you guys. I am going to dip out and go and get back to some other work. I will see you in the next video. Until then, sayonara.